Alrighty. Well, so thank you for having me. My name is Robert. Um, let's talk about hot reloading Rust, shall we? So first, um, maybe let's just start with a little demo. So I have a Rust application here. Uh, it's a sort of a little game. It's a very simple game. Uh, you can basically fly around, uh, shoot on things. Uh, it's sort of a little bit like an asteroid clone, right? So, but at the same time, uh, what I can do here is I can uh, go into my source code and I can start changing things over here. So for example, uh, these things here fly around with a certain velocity. So let's uh, change that. Let's save the code. And let's wait a second and then these things start flying a little bit faster. We can't not only change uh, the speed, so basically uh, uh, the, the, um, certain, certain things, we can also change basically the source code. So here, uh, when I press the key, um, then uh, for each key press, I basically fire a shot. Um, we can change how the firing rate works simply by uh, basically uh, firing something whenever we keep the key pressed down. So this should basically uh, increase the firing rate a little, right? And uh, so the idea here is uh, you basically, right, make a code change uh, and directly have that reflected in your program. All right. Let's kill that thing and let's go back to the slides. Um, so first of all, if you want to get the slides, uh, you can <laughs> scan that little QR code. Uh, there are like a lot of links on there and you can find um, basically what I'm talking about uh, on, on there as well. So in this talk, I want to uh, talk basically about what is uh, hot code, re uh, hot code re reload, exactly, uh, in, in Rust, how, how does it work? And uh, then basically I show you uh, a demo of how you can build something. Uh, I'll also talk about the, the limitations of that approach because there are quite a few uh, that you should be aware of, uh, but uh, there are also a bunch of uh, examples and demos around uh, that, that basically show you certain patterns of how, of how you can use that. So that uh, talk basically presents that create uh, hot lip re Reloader that you can uh, basically uh, install either via Cargo or you can find on GitHub uh, on that on that link here. So first, um, hot code reload pretty clear. We probably all all know it. It's quite uh, popular in sort of the uh, web uh, realm where you have tools like uh, uh, various builds and, and package tools that uh, basically can reload your code on the fly. And you find these these kind of uh, features mostly in uh, in dynamic uh, um, uh, tools uh, like, uh, for example, JavaScript and Ruby and and so on, um, but the uh, origins of these of these features actually were uh, pretty much in the beginning of the uh, uh, of the of the languages uh, that we are using. Erlang, uh, for example, has like built-in support for uh, this kind of of feature uh, called hot code. Uh, so Swapping there, uh, which basically is not only for uh, development, but it's also used um, uh, basically directly to deploy uh, applications. Um, because if you have like uh, many hundreds or thousands of nodes running in a large distributed system, you don't want to tear that uh, entire thing down and and restart it. You want to gradually uh, update it uh, step by step. So we don't uh, want to go. The that far, but uh, our uh, hot reloading will uh, basically just focus on, on development. Uh, Smalltalk and Lisp uh, are examples there as well. Uh, you basically have uh, uh, directly metaprogramming uh, uh, um, options there that you can use for basically uh, uh, doing uh, code changes on, on the fly. Um, and these languages basically ship sort of a, a compiler with their, with, their, with, their, with their runtime, uh, and this is basically how they make it, it possible. And uh, with, uh, with uh, static uh, 
languages like C++ and C and, and Rust, uh, this is not the case. And we basically need uh, different options there to, to implement that. So one option is uh, basically to directly change the uh, running code, the, the executable, the, the binary. Right? And uh, this is, for example, something that is supported by the Microsoft uh, Visual Studio uh, uh, tools. Um, they basically have an option for incremental co co compilation and, and linking, and um, they call it uh, edit and, and continue. And uh, this is basically um, a way to inside the debugger and in Visual Studio uh, to basically change code and then uh, basically reload these uh, changes on the fly. There are also various um, uh, tools uh, like Frida that are mostly used to uh, basically patch up uh, assembly code uh, and basically directly change the uh, function in invocations there, uh, mostly for the purpose of uh, doing reverse I engineering. Um, other tools, uh, and this uh, basically got popular using the handmade he hero uh, video uh, and screencast, um, uh, basically use uh, l uh, the dynamic uh, li library approach where uh, you basically uh, just use uh, what the operating system uh, offers you uh, in, in that you have these kind of, of modules that you can uh, load at one time uh, and even if your program is already running. And the idea there is basically that you um, will uh, create new versions of, of a library uh, while the program is running and then you basically just uh, reload these kind of new, new versions on the fly. Um, there are a couple of, of issues there. Uh, basically, operating systems assume that uh, one version of, uh, of a library uh, basically is aesthetic and won't change. So you, there are certain workarounds that we also need to do here, uh, but uh, it basically works. And um, this is, for example, also something that the Unreal Engine uses. Uh, they have, uh, have licensed a, cool, a tool called uh, Live++. Um, they are basically wrapping each C++ uh, file inside the library and uh, are then basically uh, doing a reload of that. So our approach is uh, somewhat uh, 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 like that. Um, in order to basically create a, a library in Rust, what we need to do is to um, basically specify a crate because the, the compilation unit in Rust is basically a crate. So what we, what we want to do is we want to build an executable um, that is uh, sort of the outer um, project here, uh, defined, for example, like that. Uh, so we define a workspace. The workspace uh, defines a root uh, package. Uh, this is uh, then uh, holding the main ice file, uh, the actual thing that will run in, uh, uh, when we uh, start it. And it defines a sub package, a lib package uh, that basically just uh, defines the code that you want to, to reload. Uh, we can depend on the lib package uh, just using that uh, pass uh, syntax here. Um, and then we also pull in the uh, hot reloader. Um, the uh, library itself uh, works fa uh, fairly uh, normal. Uh, it just needs to define as a create type uh, dulib so that we basically uh, create a DLL on Windows, uh, .so file uh, on, on Linux and a dulib file on uh, macOS. So and then the uh, source code. Uh, in the simplest version um, that we uh, uh, can basically come up with, uh, basically uh, the library just defines a function and functions are basically the reloadable uh, things that we can, uh, that we can um, uh, uh, work with. Uh, and that function needs that no mangle uh, attribute so that we can uh, basically look it up inside the, the library when it gets built. Um, and the uh, main file uh, then basically just starts a main loop, but it uh, 
also loads basically a special version of that of that library, uh, which is basically uh, provided uh, by the the crates that we are, that we are using here. So we have that uh, hot module uh, macro that we are uh, annotating the module with, and then we basically say we want to uh, just load all the functions that are defined inside of that lib uh, ILS file. So let's uh, take a look at that and how uh, to see how that actually works in practice. So, um, in here, I'm, um, I can basically just create a new uh, project, cargo new, um, hard hello. Um, I can then go into hot, hot hello, and then uh, we can uh, just make the adjustments uh, that, we, that we were seeing. Uh, it's actually uh, to make it a little bit faster. Uh, let's just copy that. Then uh, Titian, where are we? There we are. So um, let's create the library. And uh, let's add the library as a dependency. Like so. And um, let's uh, then also make sure that uh, we define the uh, create type for the library. Here we go. And the create type is here. And um, then we just need to add um, back one level here. Then we just need uh, to add the uh, dependency of the hot lib reloader. All right. So when we have that, uh, save everything. Uh, we can go into our uh, lib file. Uh, so let's uh, remove the initial boilerplate here. And uh, let's just have um, that hello function from the example. Save that. And then uh, last but not least, we uh, need to write the main function uh, and just copy that code over here. Um, and um, in here, uh, we basically keep that main loop uh, running, uh, but we will uh, sleep uh, basically after every step. Uh, there are different ways of, uh, of dealing uh, with that, and I'll talk about that later. But that's, that's basically the, the simplest example that you can come, come up with. So and then, um, basically, when we have the source code, then the question is, how do we run that code, right? Um, what we do is we basically start two uh, build commands. One is uh, just watching the source code of the uh, li of the library uh, di directory, and the other is just uh, running the, um, the the program as normal. So let's start that thing. Uh, lip. So here we go. So here we are building. And okay, probably. Okay, we can probably just do that offline. So cu currently, the uh, command has a problem that it is not able to install the dependencies. Uh, so let's try. Offline, uh, probably not. We we should we should probably be okay. Uh, let me just so okay. Uh, it's building, and uh, then uh, in another terminal, we will be uh, running the application itself. So okay. Okay, so here we basically just print out uh, uh, whatever we had in our print line there. Uh, let's go back into lip, lip eyes, and um, here we can uh, now basically start to change to change things. Uh, so, for example, uh, I don't know. Let me see it in that. Uh, we have like a fire emoji here, like so. Uh, we should be save the source code, and then after a short uh, reload, we, we basically get the update. 
Um, so this is basically the simplest version of the application that you can uh, write in 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 the in in this manner. Um, all right. Um, so you, you basically don't need to do all of that by by hand. Uh, there is like uh, if you use uh, the generate cargo uh, command, there is a template that basically does exactly what we just did um, uh, in 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 an automated way. Uh, basically sets up uh, a project and a, and a lib sub -pro lib sub project um, with basically all the boilerplates that you need to um, get it running. So, but now. Um, the question is actually, how does this stuff work? Right. Um, so as I already uh, said, like we are using a library behind the scenes. Right? And when we take a look at uh, what's actually going on here, I can uh, take a look in the uh, target uh, debug directory. And we see that there is a liblib. -lib dot ulib file here. Uh, lib is just the prefix that the operating system appends, right? Lib is the name of the crate, uh, which gets basically translated into the name of the uh, library file. And uh, dulib is just the uh, extension. When we load the library, we actually don't load the that file that's get, that gets produced by Rust. Uh, we will actually uh, load a copy of that file. The uh, reason for that is that the operating system is actually trying really hard to uh, cache the, the, the libraries that uh, it knows about. Right? It uh, does not want to reload all these things. And it uh, uh, basically uh, uh, thinks that once you have that library with a certain name, uh, that code inside of that library will stay the same. And uh, what we are doing behind the scenes is basically just uh, watching that file here and uh, then basically uh, copying new versions whenever it changes, and then basically telling the, pro the, the program uh, to please uh, re reload that. Uh, there's um, a crate there called li lip loading. Um, it is basically uh, uh, doing all the uh, abstractions that you need to do uh, to load a library on a different operating uh, systems. Um, and uh, this is basically what is used behind the scenes. Um, so now uh, let's go back into main eyes. And uh, just for a second, I'm going to uh, expand the macro. Uh, it's uh, a bunch of source code, uh, but uh, it might be interesting. Come on. Yeah. Macro found that point. OK. Come on. Okay, let's use uh, cargo expand over here. That will work as well. And we don't want to have any color. Um, running. So uh, it generates a bunch of source code. Uh, not all of that is ours, uh, but this here is. So what we basically do inside the macro is we uh, read the uh, file that was specified in that uh, mo inside the the module that we uh, wrote. Right? We uh, are reading the contents of librs, and for each function in there, um, we're gonna produce a new function inside of the scope of that uh, hot lib. Um, thing and um, when we call that function, um, basically whatever uh, function uh, uh, parameters and in, in return type it has, it will uh, be be mirrored here. Um, we then basically just look up the symbol for that function inside of the of the of the library, and then uh, just do the call and and return whatever the function would normally uh, return. And um, this is basically how that thing works, right? So you basically just uh, have a macro that copies some some code and, and generates some some code uh, inside of that module that you are using, and you have that uh, thing running in the background that uh, watches the the library that uh, you change and that gets built in the background, and then uh, whenever it changes, it will just uh, load a new version of it and then uh, look up the symbol. Um, 
you typically only want to do this sort of stuff uh, inside your development uh, version that you are working with, right? And um, so this is basically not specific to uh, the, the crate uh, that I'm talking about here, the, the hot lip reloader. Uh, this is basically just using Rust, Rust features uh, to basically have like a version that is, is completely, uh, 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 that, that uses the hot, hot lip re reloading uh, and a version that is, is fully static. Um, right, and you can basically just say, okay, uh, I just want to uh, define the hot lip uh, uh, thing when the reload feature is, is there. And uh, otherwise, I just want to uh, import basically all the symbols from the, the library in a, in a static way. And this basically allows you to quickly switch between a, a dynamic version and the, and, the, and the static version that you can basically ship to people uh, because you don't really want to ship the hot, uh, hot reloadable version because then you will also need to take care that the, that the, uh, the library is there and, and can be found and all that stuff. Um, the Marco also has uh, additional support for uh, um, basically allowing you to control how the reload is working. Um, so you can expose uh, a subscribe function and uh, that has two methods, wait for about to, to reload and wait for, wait for uh, the, the reload to happen. And those functions will basically block where uh, we call them. The wait for about to reload function will return a token. And as long as the token is in the scope, um, we will not reload the, the library. This means that here you basically can be certain that you still have access to the old version of, of the library. So this is important when you want to deal, for example, with the state, right? You could export uh, a struct or an, an enum from the, the library. And if you want to change that, you really need to be careful there because the, the, exe the, the executable uh, basically only knows about the old version. Right. And when you want to reload state, uh, you basically need to do uh, uh, additional steps. For example, to, to serialize and, and deserialize the, the state between uh, uh, when a reload happens. Um, and uh, this uh, basically allows you uh, to uh, have some uh, uh, option to uh, basically in between the uh, about to reload and the drop token, uh, you can, for example, uh, uh, get rid of the old state. Uh, you can you can uh, save it in some form and um, wait for reload once uh, that call uh, gets back. Um, there you have the new version of, of the library where you can basically uh, load load new state form. One question: How am I doing in terms of time? Okay, yeah, okay. So um, if you want to know more about the uh, fi five, ten minutes? Five. If you can do it in five, then it would be I think. Five, five is good, all right. I just want to be fair that you don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 all good. Um, <laughs> all good. <laughs> um, so there, there are uh, other uh, functions that you can expose from the Marco, um, uh, for example, to get a, a version number of, of the library might be useful for doing a, a migration uh, of the state, if you deal with that. Uh, you can also get uh, just like a, a flag um, that says uh, whether or not the library was just uh, reloaded or not. So there are a bunch of, of options there. So now to basically what you cannot do. Um, so as shown, uh, you basically uh, need to uh, reload only the, the functions that are being uh, exposed by the, the module that you, um, you create. That means that uh, state in and of itself, like structs and enum, and, and enums uh, will be used inside of the, of the library. And then so, uh, as long as they are, are scoped in, in there, you can change those, but uh, when you interoperate with the, the executable, then you need to uh, basically deal with that, for example, using uh, a serialized version of the state. 
You can also not have uh, 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 basically uh, ge gen generics inside of the of the functions that you uh, are using, um, which is basically a, a restriction that comes with the uh, no mangle uh, at attribute. Um, then um, the library, when it gets uh, reloaded, will basically lose any kind of global state it might hold. Right? If you have uh, any kind of like static mute uh, or any kind of uh, thread local uh, storage, then uh, you will uh, lose that. And there are uh, some some frameworks that make use of that. So for example, the uh, macro quad and, and mini quad uh, game engine uh, makes use of that. Uh, they basically initialize behind the scenes the OpenGL state. And uh, those, unfortunately, will not work with that uh, approach uh, because uh, you basically don't have the OpenGL co context once you do a, a reload. Um, so the signatures of the hot reloadable functions uh, themselves cannot change either, right? Um, you can have a, a, par a, a parameter of state that can change, but you cannot change the type, not the, the return type and not the, 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 the type of the, of the parameters uh, themselves. And then uh, again, the uh, state layout of the, of the state being held in the executable uh, can sort of change if you are, are careful. Um, there's one example here that I won't go into detail because of time, but uh, you can find it uh, here on the slides and there's also uh, examples inside of the, of the repository that basically show how you can serialize and deserialize a uh, state in order to make uh, changes in, in state. The short version is right, you can save and load it and uh, you can make use of the subscribe feature and then uh, between uh, wait for about to, to, to reload and the reload itself, you can uh, save and then load the, the state. And uh, this is basically how that stuff can, can work. All right, so uh, if you wanna know more, uh, you can find uh, that on the uh, GitHub repository. Uh, there are a bunch of examples there that show how it can be used with uh, different kinds of frameworks. Uh, there's also a version on crates.io uh, and then there's the template that you can use to basically uh, create new projects. And that's it. Who wants to have the first question, Kipo? Uh, so I need to speak into it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will try. Um, you mentioned the, the unit of recompilation is a function. Does it also work with methods, firstly? And secondly, why does it not work with generics? Yeah, so uh, first, why not the uh, generics? Uh, that's because of the no mangle. Uh, no mangle basically has no support for uh, getting generic uh, arguments in a format where uh, you would be able to look that up inside the, the library. Um, it works basically on the uh, scope of, of a crate. So whatever you put inside of the crate and ex export, um, you can uh, reload all the functions there. It does not yet work for uh, impl uh, methods of structs and enums. Um, there is not really a technical issue there, uh, and probably at some point uh, we're gonna support it. Um, it does not work for traits though. So traits uh, basically have sort of the same issue with the no mangle, and uh, there, as long as you use them in internally, um, you know, you can change them, uh, but you can't uh, change a trait implementation or uh, change the trait it itself and then uh, make use of that inside the, the executable. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you.